She speaks a number of uh, languages, quite impressive array. She speaks Malagasy, French, Malay, Indonesian, Norwegian, Spanish, and Chinese. And uh, she has a really wonderful story to tell about how she knows all these languages. So join me in welcoming um, Danamon and Nari Manan. Thank you, David. Have you ever heard of Madagascar? Yeah. Not the movie, the country. The island located southeast of Africa. The island of 20 million people and the Malay Indonesian heritage. Tonight, I want to tell you an untold story about that Madagascar, my country. I left Madagascar for the first time when I was 17. It was the year 2007. I had won the only scholarship offered to Madagascar to attend United World College, an elite international school in Norway. At the time, our economy in Madagascar was growing at almost 7% under the leadership of President Ravalmanan. Despite the pain of leaving my home, I was hopeful and optimistic Madagascar was finally getting out of poverty. I've always wanted to help my country, so winning that scholarship comforted me a sense of power and responsibility. It also presented me with challenges. In addition to a much colder climate, a different culture, a different academic curriculum, I also had to adapt to a new language of instruction. I barely spoke English then. It was a steep learning curve, but that did not divert me from my goals. I convinced my peers to join me in my efforts to give back to Madagascar. To raise money for a project in Madagascar, my classmates and I worked long days in Norwegian farms and stayed up late organizing cafes and shows. The next summer, 2008, we built a primary school on the outskirts of Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar. I didn't expect to be able to give back so much so soon. And more than ever before, I felt confident about Madagascar's future until January 26, 2009. That day came during the last semester, my last semester in Norway. I had just applied to college. As I routinely logged on to my Malagas news websites, I saw the ghostly images of 44 blackened dead bodies. Poor souls who had been caught in three large fires during a political protest in Antananarivo. Politicians unwilling to comply with the stricter corruption regulations duped the rioters into their fight for democracy. That day, the rioters burned down the headquarters of the national television and radio stations, along with department stores and businesses owned by the president. I panicked. Are my parents and siblings okay? What would happen next? Is this just the beginning of long-term chaos? After I confirmed the safety of my family, waves of emotion washed over me. First, relief, then heartbreak, then anger, then disappointment, and finally, a lingering sense of betrayal. How could these people burn down the archives of our entire history? How could they so readily destroy public property when we had so little? How could they do this when I had sacrificed my home and exiled myself in this cold land so that I would eventually turn the little that we have into a little more, and that into a little more until maybe we'd have enough. But the rioters were mere pawns. They also wanted a better life for Madagascar. They also were fighting for a brighter future. They couldn't have known that the factories that they burned down that day would never be replaced, depriving our island's children of milk. They couldn't have known that 
their fight for democracy would turn into a coup d'etat, and that into a four-year oppressive transitional government. Two months later, President Raval Manana was ousted. Four years later, 2013 now, the crisis persists. Inflation and crime rates escalated. Natural resources are depleted by politicians who prolong the crisis. And the ethics of honesty, hard work, and patriotism are gradually fading away. Meanwhile, I graduated from school in Norway. In 2009, I became the first Malagash ever to pursue an undergraduate degree at Harvard. Once again, I felt that same sense of empowerment and responsibility. But so many things had changed. Instead of developing, Madagascar was falling deeper into poverty. I had also changed. I was not the same as when I left home in 2009, 2007. I had learned something hard. It is easy to destroy. Rebuilding is much harder. Whether you are rebuilding a relationship, a project, a dream, or an entire country. But every failure is also an opportunity to test our passions, to start over, and build better things. Recovering from our crisis in Madagascar will take years and tremendous efforts from the entire population. Things have become worse, but I still have my share of power and responsibility. Last year, I again led a group and we built a health clinic near the elementary school that we had built a few years before. I did not stop trying. Even though the road to recovery is long, I will not stop trying. Even though the future that I'm working for could be swept away in a flash again, I will not stop trying. No matter what happens, I will never stop trying. Thank you. <laughs>